So yeah, it turns out the Corian has an A side and a B side. And uh, this stuff, uh, believe it or not, uh, you're looking at the B side, which doesn't have very many white chunks in it. But as you can tell by looking at the edge, apparently when they make this stuff, all some of the all the smaller pieces go to the bottom, or either they just grind it on one side. Probably cast a ticker and then grind it. That's my guess. But anyway, whatever they do, here's what it looks like in the end view. So uh, I calculated it to give me the best uh, after after I turn it to give me the best overall appeal. Most of this B side is going to be removed, of course. It'll be gone. And those little tiny voids they'll be gone and uh, that's what it looks like in the end views still got some remnants of the uh, brown paper bag there yeah and I, and I thought I was gonna run out of super glue okay two dollars and 88 cents you know they charge you for this stuff right there it is uh, Lowe's or Home Depot can't remember but anyway I bought this super glue and I did uh, two of the two of the gluings, and I, I had three done, right? So I was running out of super glue. Matter of fact, I didn't have quite enough super glue left. So I decided to dismantle this damn thing. Yeah, I figured there must be more super glue in here. You know, this is modern manufacturing. So uh, I dismantled this thing. I uh, I took the the the, uh, the tube with the cap on it. And took it over to my bench grinder. I ground off both edges. First, I pried the bottom out, this little thing, which uh, turns out to be this, okay? This is what's inside your super glue container. And then I looked down inside there, all right? Yeah. Found out there's a tube of gel. Well, I call it gel, but you might call it gel. But there's a tube of uh, Loctite gel in there. And uh, so I said, hey, let me take this thing apart. So I ground it on both sides. And then I use my little handy paring knife and cut the last little bit. And uh, gives me this, all right? Yeah, it gives me this thing here, which is inside the uh, super glue container. Little tube of gel, you know? And... Uh, now that all the Corians glued together, this thing was, this thing, you know, you could, the way they designed it, these things only squeeze it enough to, uh, to, it, it, uh, it leaves quite a bit of gel in the tube still, okay? So if you're a tightwad like me, and uh, you want to get your last bit of gel out, you have to squeeze it, and, uh, you, you have to remove the thing from your, uh, little plastic, uh, whatever you call it, these little gizmos and crap. And so, uh, yeah, so th there really is enough uh, of your uh, of your Loctite gel to do the job. Okay? Yeah. All right. So really, I haven't decided exactly how what I'm going to use for a lathe to turn this knob yet. I have to turn that giant block of Corian. I'm going to have to make a lathe to turn that thing. And it may involve my... Uh, my old router, which is there, my old Craftsman router, or, or it may also involve my old uh, drill press uh, as part of the deal, or or that thing and the drill press, or I'm going to have to make a turning tool because I sure ain't going to go out and buy a whole set of wood turning tools to do this. So anyway, I brought some motors home from the shop, you know. I got that motor, and I got two more motors. And uh, I was going to make an arbor and a shaft and everything else, and we're going to get this knob done, you know what I mean? Yeah! Don't forget, there's more gel. There's more gel hidden inside your, uh, inside your plastic, uh, inside your plastic nuisance. Remember, if you buy a nuisance, there's more gel inside, hidden. Yeah, here's some more of the stuff I might use to make that lathe. 
You know, I was going to thread the end of this shaft over here, uh, which is underneath the glue bottles, of course. Yeah, I was going to thread that half inch. Uh, I was either going to thread the shaft itself, or I was going to weld a piece of bolt onto it. Here's the pieces of bolt. And I got all these bearings and bushings, and I got an old lawnmower blade. I thought I might use that for a uh, for a uh, turning tool, hey? Eh? You know? Eh. Or maybe I'll just use this quarter inch square thing over here, which is high speed steel, or an old wood chisel, and I even thought about using this piece of file here, which is actually a piece of, uh, piece of uh, metal working file that I've rigged up a little bit. I've done some rigging, as I usually do, first I buff that side with my welding grinder a little bit, then it's got a slight bevel on it, and uh, I used a 36 grit disc on it. Well, maybe I'll break down and use an 80 or a 120 grit. Give it a real nice look, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so I got the pulley. You know, I got the pulleys, and uh, I got the belts, and uh, I got some of this junk. And I got some clamps, you know, I got all kinds of clamps. Oh, yeah, and another thing is it might involve this die grinder here, this Harbor Freight horror story. And I might use the die grinder. I might use this here old die grinder to, uh, you know, to really uh, get down in there and, uh, you know, turn that core in. I may have to use a jig to hold it, you know. And uh, as you can tell, I'm a little shaky. But here's a nice close-up of the burr. It's a little bit clogged. But, you know, uh, you know. We're going to do it, and it's going to be exciting. We're going to have some fun. We're going to turn some Corian. We could use the welding grinder, too, as a cutting tool. I haven't really decided yet. It's going to be mystical. It's going to be fairly mystical. You know, but hey, you know, it'll turn out. You'll see.